Hi there. I'm Dr. Kirk Lexo, and I'm a pediatrician and infectious diseases specialist, and I want to help keep your family healthy. You turn to doctors and other healthcare providers because we use the most trusted and current medical knowledge to care for our patients. That's at the very core of how I provide care and why I first became a physician, and to practice medicine to keep people as healthy as possible. In the past decade or so, celebrities and other self-proclaimed health gurus have shared their views against vaccines. But their positions are not backed up by credible research, and upon examination, their positions have been refuted repeatedly by medical science, the very same source that you've trusted for your medical care. It's hard to prove a negative. It's like asking me to capture the boogeyman to show you he doesn't exist. It's impossible. Sometimes, these skeptical positions, they live on, even in doctors' offices, where parents turn to us when it comes to their family's health and well-being. So why then are more parents questioning us when it comes to routine vaccines? It's a good question so that you understand and can make an informed decision using credible sources. Parents who hear these views are often left confused and indecisive. The result is that some children don't get routine vaccinations and their health is put at risk. Doctors and nurses have you and your child's best interests at heart. Today I'll talk about some common questions or concerns about vaccines and encourage you to continue this conversation with your doctor. I hope that you'll make the best choice for your entire family based on medical science. Every year, routine immunizations protect Canadian families and children from preventable illnesses and disease. And hey, needles aren't fun. As a parent myself, I don't like to see my child upset. But vaccines can only protect when they're used. And just like a car seat or a seat belt, if you delay or don't vaccinate, then your child misses out on that protection. Vaccines have an excellent safety record, and they're continually monitored and tested around the world and in Canada before they're approved for use. You're the proud parents of a healthy baby. Congratulations! <coughs> Among all the other new routines in your life, like sleep and feeding schedules, your doctor will give you an immunization schedule. This schedule outlines when to make an appointment for your baby's first and follow-up vaccines. They start around two months of age. If you have already missed shots, you can still catch up. Speak to your doctor or nurse about getting them back on track. With every vaccination, you're helping your baby's immune system fight off diseases that could otherwise harm their organs, limbs, thinking, and speaking abilities. So how do vaccines work? Well, they trigger a response from your baby's immune system, which learns to recognize and then attack and defend against the infection in case of future exposure. Some vaccines require several doses to offer the most protection. Timing matters. Like farming or taking care of your car, getting the right vaccine at the right time ensures that the process works. Years ago, it was not uncommon for children in their first five years to die or suffer the long-term consequences from vaccine-preventable diseases. Vaccines have helped change that. Immunization programs have been one of the single most effective public health interventions, saving millions of lives around the world in the last century. But even today, cases of vaccine-preventable diseases do occur and can spread in daycares and school settings. And that puts other children at risk of catching measles, mumps, rubella, whooping cough, and meningitis. Some children have to stay home some might go to the hospital and go on antibiotics, and even in the worst case, suffer complications like paralysis, disability, deafness, blindness, and even death. Vaccines can help protect against these diseases and their complications. In 2014, measles outbreaks in southern Alberta and British Columbia in under-immunized communities resulted in dozens of confirmed cases and hundreds of scares before being declared over. You and your family can help protect your child by making sure everyone around them is up to date with their vaccines. By doing this, it helps form a cocoon of disease protection. Some parents are concerned that the number of vaccines may overburden babies' immune systems, but there really is no evidence to support this. Our immune systems are constantly exposed to new challenges in our everyday environment. Exposure to vaccines is just a tiny part of what a baby's immune system needs to face, and babies can handle them easily. The side effects of vaccines, like temporary pain or mild flu-like symptoms, are pretty minor when compared to the worst-case outcomes of not vaccinating. Serious allergic reactions from vaccines are very rare and are reported immediately to Public Health Agency of Canada so that any problems can be dealt with quickly. So what else is in vaccines? Well, vaccines also contain very small amounts of other ingredients, and all of which play necessary roles. These ingredients help vaccines work better, longer and faster, stay sterile, and help maintain quality during storage at different temperatures. By sticking to the vaccination schedule set out by your doctor, your child's health is maintained without interruption so they can grow learn new skills, and experience life. <laughs> I get my kids vaccinated because I know the facts. And if you have doubts or questions, talk to your doctor or nurse. Get the medical facts from your doctor, ask questions, and understand what the research says.